Hello again. Today we're going to be taking a look at um, colouring again uh, using Staffordshire Black. This little piece of sycamore is just what we had left from a previous project. It has a has a, has a crack down there which I've glued up which may or may not affect the final outcome depending on how far it's penetrated but we'll see how that goes. Um, because it's only a little piece, I'm going to make a very quick Christmas tree. Um, I'm then going to colour it. I'm not entirely sure what with. Possibly this could be green, I would imagine. <clears throat> green would be the way to go. Uh, uh, but we'll, then we'll take it from there. Now, this isn't a video to critique me turning skills. So, <laughs> I'm definitely going to fast forward it. Uh, I may even cut it out altogether. So... I'll come back to you when we have a Christmas tree. A little bug hole in there, see that? I'll come back to you when we have a Christmas tree. All right. A very quick Christmas tree. <clears throat> um, very quick, a couple of tool marks on there, it doesn't really matter. It's quite a nice sycamore, it's got a little bit of blue in it. That's the crack I was talking about earlier, but uh, the glue feels like it's filled that up nicely. I think that will, you will be able to see when the Staffordshire black goes on there, I think you will be able to see where the glue is because that will have blocked uh, the pores of the wood. Uh, I'm going to switch the video off. I'm going to Nip to the other workshop. I'm going to uh, put the air hose on it. I'm going to get the dust out of it. Uh, then I'm going to uh, put uh, wipe some water on it to raise the grain. The grain, um, what happens there is when the water gets into the grain, the, 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 the individual fibres swell up and they, they start to stick up like little fuzzy bits. So if you do that first before you put the Staffordshire black on and then sand it back that means when you put the Staffordshire black on it's not going to raise the grain again because you've already sorted that out. Uh, so that's what I'll do. I'll air hose it, I'll put a little bit of water on to raise the grain, sand it off, come back and it'll look exactly like this again. This has now been uh, it's, it's had the dust blown out with the air hose um, and I've put water on it which is dried, uh, raising the grain, I've sanded that back just to get all the fuzzy stuff off. So now we're ready just to stick a little bit of colour on. I'm going to keep it simple because um, this is just a demonstration uh, which means I'm only going to put green on here and a bit of red on here. Uh, we'll ebonise over the top of that when that's done when that's dried and we'll see how it takes the color this big fat um, trunk uh, will catch a little bit of the color a little bit of the ebonizing and stuff so just to clean it up right at the end i'll run a chisel across it and just bring it back to the bay sycamore and make all those edges nice and crisp uh, so color right so we're going to do green here red here Turn the camera around, uh, just to get my big fat hand out of the way of the lens. The first thing we need to do is get some Staffordshire Black Tannin Juice. And a foam brush and get plastering some on there. It's not the first thing to do, that's the second thing to do. The first thing to do is to cover your lid bit. Because you're going to be putting plenty of this on as the key to this working is all about how much of this is absorbed into the wood Now 
and get it right into the tight spots as well. I know it looks like you're wasting a lot, but there's plenty in the bottle. And it's not like you're going to run out anytime soon. So, as this is in effect the activating, activating ingredient for the ebonizing juice, then you need to make sure you get plenty on there to make sure it works. And we'll just stick some on the, uh, the red bucket there as well. So, now this is done. Again, we'll let this dry. It's best to let it dry naturally um, because if you use a heat source, <clears throat> then you're going to be evaporating all of this away off the surface before it's had any chance of getting into the pores of the wood. So we got it nice and shiny, nice and wet. Don't worry about the bubbles. And then just let it dry. There's the possibility, if you're anything like me, you haven't really got the time or the patience to wait for it to dry naturally and you want to get a heat source on it. What I will say is... If you're going to do that, at least give it five minutes to get in there, to get the juice in there. Again, to get as much in as possible. Go and put the kettle on or something. Go make a cup of tea. Right, we'll leave that to dry. We'll come back as soon as it's ready. Uh, put the camera back where it was. Because at least this way you can see the red on there as we put the ebonizing juice on. Um, let's see, where's my bottle? Ebonizing juice. There you go. Now as you can see the, the tannin juice that's on this sycamore has dried. Uh, it has practically disappeared. You can't really see anything different on there uh, from when we put the colour on. So <clears throat> the idea now is ebonizing juice, foam brush, and just paint it on there. Now hopefully you'll start to see it working pretty much straight away. And this effect will continue to happen it's not just what you see is what you get now it will continue to happen as it dries until it's fully dry where it will be paler again it's quite dark now sort of not paler it'll be less glossy uh more of a matte finish And ready for the next coat. <clears throat> now I think what I might do is the last time I did this on Sycamore I gave it three coats and all the colour practically vanished. So this time I was going to do two but I think I'll decide on that when this is dry. Don't forget to keep washing your brushes out after you've finished each coat because in the action of doing this now with the brush is taking off tan and juice that was on there originally <clears throat> and as I dip it back into my jar it's adding more tan and juice in there where it shouldn't be. If you don't wash your brush out you're introducing even more tannin juice into your ebonizing juice and vice versa. Uh, it won't make immediate differences, an immediate difference, but the more you do that, especially if 
sorry, I'm trying to make sure I've got all these bits here. Especially if you're decanting the little jar I'm using, if you're decanting that back into the main bottle, you'll be ruining the entire bottle because you'll be putting all that tannin juice that you've taken off this piece, put in the jar and then into the bottle. And that'll ruin your whole batch. So we always advise against doing that because the more you mix the two solutions together, the less control you're gonna have over the final outcome, which is exactly the stage we're at now. So that's a good healthy coat of ebonizing juice. As this dries, especially if it's on a lathe, you'll find it pools under the bottom here. So if you're hanging around, Make sure you give it a half turn every now and then, then just to spread it out. And, uh, well, first of all, it'll help it dry more evenly. And it may help avoid dribble marks. And you don't want dribble marks in your piece. As you can see as I'm talking, that's going a little bit darker. Uh, it won't dry like this. But we'll see in a few minutes when it has dried. And we'll see the differences you know it's, it's nice and shiny now but it won't be when we come back so we're all dry now if you remember the initial colors were just a, a simple green and a simple red they were garish nothing wrong with that but that's not what we wanted to do with this because we wanted to ebonize over the top which was to introduce a blackening effect now, had I gone further in that process, this is just one quart of um, tannin juice followed by one quart of ebonizing juice. So it's just one round of applications. Had I gone further with that, two, maybe three quarts, three quarts would have probably been almost black. Uh, and very little colour would have shown through and uh, um, there hopefully will be another video of me putting three rounds of ebonizing solutions on a piece of sycamore and you'll see the difference. So here I've just decided to go for the one. Um, everything's dulled down while it's been drying um, but what we do now is add, this is what we like to do, um, we add some oil. I've got to keep my hands out with that camera. Right. Let's see. Simple walnut oil. Uh, this dries. It's a drying oil. Um, so it polymerizes. Goes harder. It helps protect the piece. You see how those colours are coming out already? It helps protect the piece. And also, as you can see, it accentuates the ebonizing that we've been doing. Plenty of oil, plenty of oil. Get loads in there. Sure, I get it underneath there as well. You can see how the colours are the deepening, but the green is coming out lovely. Actually, the where it's gone purple on on the edges here. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of been blended more into the piece because of the black that's gone over the top of it so it's not such an obvious thing it's more of a highlight now oh, let me chuck a little bit on the red that's soaking right in there so this is 
previously unfinished wood so it's got plenty of open pores look at that that's gone a maroon color that's gorgeous that's lovely um yeah plenty of open pores to get the oil in there the pores haven't been blocked up by anything we've done so far the spirit stains make their way into the wood through the pores and don't clog them up on the way through as maybe a, well the paint would definitely do on the surface the ebonizing solutions again because they're so thin they seep right into the pores of the wood where they combine chemically the tannin juice and the ebonizing juice and they turn the wood black but all that is to say the pores haven't been messed with at all which means this oil goes right in there and blends with everything that's been put on previously and as it does that the finish gets better and better what I'll do with this is probably leave it overnight now once I've made sure this is well worked in I wander past it now and again and give it a bit of a rub make sure it stays shiny for as long as I can which means there's still plenty of oil on the surface and as I leave it overnight the wood will absorb as much as it needs to and I'll give it a final buff in the morning and that'll be it done so there you go that's another test of experiment with ebonizing over color green on that side's lovely so let me adjust the light a little bit does that help no nope. no there you go for now anyway so yeah uh, I'll leave this overnight, let it dry, give it a buff in the morning and it'll be all done. No, it won't be. I need to, uh, this trunk here, I'm going to um, attack it with a chisel again. Just to clean all that up and take it back down to the bare wood. I might make it a little bit thinner as well while I'm there. We'll see how it goes. Um, so there you go. That is using colour with staffordshire black ebonizing juice and tannin juice and how just one coat of one round of applications affects the wood obviously if you want to uh, make it darker you just keep going so there you go i hope that was informative uh, if you need to know anything, if you need to read anything, if you need to get in touch, uh, we're at staffordshireblack.co.uk. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.